Hello everyone and welcome back to designing a website in Figma. In today's video, we're going to be creating a consent checkbox that we're going to place into our form on our page. This is the final result. It's an interactive component and let's get started. So in the previous episode, we have created this form field component. Just to remind you, I'm going to um, launch the prototype and show you what we have actually created. I'm going to take a moment to load um, and I'm going to go to reach out to us and when I hover over these form fields I can click them to activate them and then click again to um, deactivate them, right? So this is what we have created in the previous episode. And today we're going to create the consent checkbox um, that we're going to place right underneath this, basically this very simple form for users to confirm that they agree to our privacy policy, for example. Um, so to start, I'm going to first create the actual checkbox um, and then we're going to create the text, compile both of these inside of a component and then make that interactive. To further clarify, the checkbox by itself, the little square, is going to be a separate component just in case we want to reuse this in a different context. Um, so let me get started. I'm going to press F on my keyboard to launch the frame tool and then I'm going to create a small, let's say 20 by 20 square, small frame, and this is going to be our checkbox. So I'm going to rename this to uh, checkbox and then probably this thing is going to be, you know, it's going to have rounded corners it's also going to have a stroke um, that's going to be placed inside. It's going to be like, I don't know, two or three points wide, the stroke. Um, we're going to have to test which version looks best. But for now, let's just go with two. Let me also remove the fill, okay, so that we just basically have this, this outline of a checkbox. And maybe let's go for a bigger rounding, like six, five, Let's go for five. And I'm going to now turn this into a component, which means clicking this icon or pressing Option Command K. So Option Command K. Uh, this is now a component. I am going to add a variant because a checkbox is going to be like unchecked and then checked. OK, so let me just select this checkbox component and go to properties over here and edit the name of the property to state and also these values are going to be, let's say, false and true. This is a very cool trick. Let me show you why I did that. So when you go to assets, actually, let me search for our checkbox component. You need to make sure that since I have multiple pages in my prototype, I need to make sure that when I look through assets, I actually you know, uh, open this sub menu uh, that matches what page I'm currently on. So checkbox is right here. Let me use that on our page. And now, as you can see, when I use this, uh, this component, here I have an instance of this component, you can see that I get this switcher, this toggle button. Uh, so if this were, for example, let me add a fill, um, you can see how when I go back and forth with this component, uh, it's very understandable. You can just turn this off and on. And this is approximately the logic that's gonna, that's gonna be, we're gonna use with this component. Uh, what's missing with this checkbox is, of course, a check mark. So let me use my pen tool and click inside of this checkbox state uh, once and then um, twice like this and then again to create a check mark. I'm going to press enter and also this check mark is going to be white. So let me change the stroke to white. It's going to be quite prominent. I think like maybe two points wide, the stroke. It's also going to be positioned somewhat in the center so that it looks balanced. And then let me also change the position of this, of these points. So what I did here, let me recap. What I'm doing here is selecting this object, pressing enter, and then moving these little circles around to get um, the shape that I, that I like. Okay, so I think it's nice to have a right angle, right? So when I rotate this, you can see how it's a right angle, 90 degrees, but uh, basically create whatever looks best to you. Okay, so this isn't really um, that important, to be honest. So let's just create something that looks nice. Maybe three points wide. What do we think? Yep, three points wide, a little bit bigger overall. So 
we have the, the inactive and the active state or let's say the off and on state. I think I'm gonna go for green. Okay, so I think um, I'm quite used to seeing green checkboxes. So why don't we why don't we just use a green color for our checkbox? Okay, so I removed the stroke. I hit the stroke, turned it off, and then um, replaced the fill or added a new fill with this color. So um, this means that I'm going to make this a bit more sophisticated when it comes to the appearance. Let me add an effect that's going to be an inner shadow. It's going to be, uh, this one's going to be black, so it's going to be positioned like this, okay? So we want to try and make it look a little bit interesting. You can see how the inner shadow is coming from the, from uh, basically from the bottom right. Um, let me also adjust these values and also change the blend mode to overlay. Why don't we try that, All right? Blend mode to overlay. And then another thing I'm gonna do is duplicate this filter, this effect, sorry, and then change the positions and change the color, right? So what I did is basically I made sure the second effect comes from the top left. So the first one comes from the bottom right, the second one is gonna come from the top left. Uh, I'm gonna change the color of this effect to white and it's gonna stay at overlay when it comes to the blend mode. So that's, this is the final outcome, or like um, this is what we get essentially. I think I'm gonna reduce the opacity of this to like 30, I don't know. Maybe we could add a shadow again, um, which is gonna be, gonna have a positive spread, it's gonna have no blur, and it's also gonna have no X and Y values are both gonna be set to zero. Then I'm gonna sample the approximate middle color of this checkbox and set the opacity to like 16, right? So we get this extra shadow active looking effect around, around the checkbox. Let's just keep it that way and see if that actually looks good in the final result. So we added a bit more sophistication to our uh, checkbox design just a few effects to make it look a little bit more interesting. And now we are going to continue with building the final consent checkbox component. And this means I'm gonna use the text tool by pressing T on my keyboard, and then I'm gonna click and type in something like, by submitting this form, you agree to our privacy policy. Privacy policy, something that you see very frequently, so then once I have that, I'm going to select the, the checkbox components instance and this text and press shift A to add an auto layout. Also, I'm going to make sure that this text uses our design system. So I'm going to set this text style to body text bold or just body text, I think. Let's just try that. Uh, the spacing is going to be like eight. Let's try that. And then the text is going to be set to fill container. When we now take this frame 14, and when you resize this, you can see how it's basically responsive, right? So that's our goal. I think I'm gonna change the spacing to 10. And this is gonna be the final checkbox consent component. I'm gonna rename this to checkbox consent. So as you can see, we are currently having a nested component. So we have a checkbox component within the soon to be checkbox consent component. So let me select this turn it into a component and then adding a variant. Um, I think we can get three variants, okay? We can get a def default, hover and active. So I'm gonna create another one. So now we have three. So all of these three are gonna be responsive as you can see, and we're gonna do a couple of adjustments. We are going to select all of these three text objects, which you can do by selecting the first one and then pressing Option Command A. So Option Command A. This selects all of these. Under Content, I'm going to create a text property that's going to be called Text, just text. And now all of these are linked to one text property. Also, with the first state, that's going to be inactive, of course, because it's unchecked, right? The second one that's also gonna be inactive. And then the third one is gonna be fully active like this. So what's gonna be the difference here? What is going to be the difference? First of all, let me, let me reduce the opacity of the black color on the checkbox in the inactive state to approximately 60 or 50%. 
then in the first variant of the checkbox consent component, I'm going to match that um, opacity with this text. So it's going to be like partially transparent, okay? It's going to be 50 or 60 as well. And then when I actually hover over this, I want to make sure that this checkbox becomes more prominent. So let's set the stroke to 100%. And then finally, when you, we actually check this, um, this happens. Let me use an instance of this component right here. And when I, you know, change the size, I can change also the property from default to variant two and then variant three. Nice. So you can see how it's basically you can change the states. Then I'm going to select this checkbox consent component. I'm going to go to properties and I'm going to again something similar that we did with the checkbox um, component. I'm going to rename the variant property to state and then the first one is going to be default, second one hover and third one active. So now when we actually again go back to the instance we get these three right state and text so that it's understandable. Okay and now let me actually set up the interactivity right so I'm going to select this and send component and go to prototype select the first variant connect the first variant to the second variant like this and under interaction details I'm going to go for while hovering change to state hover it's going to be instant okay and then when I actually click it so I selected the second variant and connected that to the third variant. This is going to be on click, change to state active, and it's also going to be instant. And then when I click this again, uh, I'm going to return back to the default state. So if you remember from the previous episode, this interaction is very similar to what we set up with this form field component. And of course, this is not how real world, well, actually in the case of the checkbox, it is how re the real world uh, checkbox actually behaves. But the form field, uh, we just set this interaction up so that it it's somehow interactive yet not really 100% similar to the real world. So in the real world, when you click outside of the form field, it deactivates, but, but in this case, in this prototype, when you click the actual form field again, it deactivates, okay? So it's slightly similar, but in the case of a checkbox consent component, that's, um, that's what you get normally. So no difference there basically. And yep, yeah, this is our, this is our ready component. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a couple things. Here we have a form and I'm going to make one of these fields slightly bigger. So let me select the form field component within this frame, and make it taller like this. And additionally, I'm going to select the field auto layout within the component and set the height to fill container. So now you can see that it actually reflects the height of this component. We have form fields with different heights. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to select this component that we have created, press command X, select the auto layout and press command V into this form. So basically we get a consent checkbox at the very end of this form, right? I'm also going to use a button. Why don't we? Why don't we use a button? So assets, button, command X, select the form, command V, and then fill container maybe. Yeah, let's, let's try this. Additionally, with the consent checkbox, that's also going to be to fill container. Okay, so now because we have been disciplined with the creation of our components. When I now resize these components, you can see how, how everything is responsive. So can you imagine how easy it's gonna be uh, then creating the mobile version? So that's, that's, very, that's very good. Let me also make this a little bit wider so that we get all of this on one line. And let me, let me launch the prototype, or actually just relaunch this prototype. And this is what we get. We get a contact us page with field one, two, and three. And as you can see, one of these fields is bigger than the rest, but the interactivity is still there. You can see how it highlights. And then when it comes to the consent checkbox, when I hover over this consent checkbox, you can see how it highlights, right? So. Um, gray becomes black and then when I click it we get 
an active state of our checkbox component. And I can go back and forth with this interaction similar to this, um, these four fields. So, and the cool thing is when I now want to, for example, change the color or just somehow adjust how this looks when selected, I can just go here, go right here and for example, make the shadow bigger. So let's change the spread to four instead of two and the change is immediately reflected um, in uh, across all these instances of this component uh, that can be used by the way multiple times within one form so you can basically get a multiple choice um, multiple choice situation going on here but i'm going to remove these we're just going to get one and maybe in the future we're going to be reusing this checkbox component uh, who knows um, but for now, this is the only use case that we have now. So yeah, this is the final result. We get a hover, active and inactive state. Leave a like if this video helped you. Let me know in the comments if there's anything unclear. And I will see you in the next episode of designing a website in Figma.